Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? This is your boy TY Knowledge coming to you with a unique video, unique documentary. This is part one. I have a lot to do. Okay, so we're going to jump right into things. We're going to talk about visions and just gifts and life in general and how you must use your time on this earth to your advantage. So that is you right there. Of course, you're deceased. So. What have you left behind? What was your purpose in life? What do you feel is your purpose in life? Do you feel you've been here before and you still have acknowledgement of your previous life? Do you feel that you have an angelic gene? That means that you have genes of uh, angels and you have visions. Are you a poet? Are you a prophet? Me, I'm very universal. I have a lot of gifts. I always had an obsession with the afterlife and what happens or as I'm already part of you know God's plan in the world you know all types of things I always have visions about Armageddon every since I was little we're gonna read my dream right away and we're gonna discuss other things my first dream I had is when I was younger okay it was basically up in heaven okay it was a spiritual man and he had a servant and it was a long long list of bodies and people's in their coffins or cremation or whatever and as I got older I realized maybe that was like a second copy of the people who's down you know who's buried who's deceased and they're going to be caught up you know they're going to be judged first they're going to be caught up and I said, wow, that's interesting. You know, I never thought about that. And that's when I was like eight or nine years old. And that interests me. So, I always felt like, you know, I don't belong in this dimension. Or, I've always been interested in the end of the Bible. Never in the beginning. Like, oh, man. You know, maybe he knows something. Maybe I know more. Maybe this gift. It's telling me something, you know, so I like acting. I like I'm a poet. I like this writing down as much as I can. I lost a lot of my work, but, you know, it's okay. I'll make it back up. So me, I'm a busybody. Like I try to do many movies as I can, many sketches, come up with a lot of poet stuff, just any and everything like a musician, you know, but I like don't do music. You know, I freestyle for fun, but I don't do that. I like writing poems, like I'm saying, poetry, I like making movies, I like doing numerous of things because I'm a universal person. Everyone is like that, but I don't want to be gone. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be forgotten when I'm gone, you know? They drop you down there, you ever notice someone die, you will bring them up and they go, oh man, they dead, or that body, it's like nothing, it's like you never was born, you know? So I keep doing these things, I'm going to leave my knowledge my thoughts my creativity all this stuff in your brain you need to let out you need to let out because once you're gone it's not going to be there anymore all right so i just always felt like man it's something special about me i just totally feel that with these visions and dreams i be having so we're going to get right into my first dream that i had i'm gonna break it down to you guys all right it was a warm outside a long time ago in the summertime, late night dream. All the people on the inner world was doing what they usually do. One cloud, there were two angels, dark brown hair. Age, they were like juveniles. Nationality unknown. On the other cloud, there was four angels between the ages of 20 and 25. And on the end of the cloud popped out a baby angel between the ages of five and eight. It was only where you can see the face and the shoulders with the most yellowish, golden, short, curly hair I have seen in my life. And had the darkest, deepest blue eyes like the ocean. You can just smell and feel the breeze. I have never seen anything like that. And the an angel winked his or her eye. All the angels blew their trumpets. 
It was the loudest sound I heard in my life. It was louder than a train, a fire truck, and a storm warning sound all put together. Everyone stopped what they were doing and looked around and fireballs started falling from the sky. Everyone ran for their lives but couldn't have the fireballs damage everything it touched. Death crying was everywhere and people was hiding and begging God for their forgiveness. Some angels were scooping people up and some angels was flying right past them. It was the wildest dream I ever had in my life for a young person and I continue to have dreams like this in different forms my whole life. Some I find myself begging God for forgiveness in the midst of it. It's very real and it's very true. That's why I'm telling you guys you need to study yourself and see where you from and what's going on with you. I always felt I was going to be here at the end of times. I always feel always getting caught up in these dreams but I still got to you know beg for forgiveness. If you have dreams like this, it's dead on serious, you know. Because they say you ask God for forgiveness and he will forgive you. So sometimes you be like, oh man, Trump is blowing. You trying to hurry and beg for forgiveness before, you know, it's too late. So, you know, we have dreams like that. And sometimes it's a sign, you know. And sometimes we may feel, you know, different things about religion. But we're going to also get into that. We're going to get in relationships. We're going to get into any and everything. But I'm just letting you guys know what I feel about myself. Because some people may feel like this. You may feel like you a servant of God. There was many are angels. You know, you can have a genetic gene of an angel. It's possible because angels came down from heaven and had sex with the women. Now, you need to know there's only man angels, all right? But they had sex with the women. So some way there can be something about you. Maybe that's why you feel like an outcast. Maybe you're always predicting stuff. You know, you just don't feel like you fit in. You feel like you belong in another dimension. It can be like that sometimes. But we're going to get into some more stuff in just a second. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is black on black crime, how we treat each other, okay? Now, first thing I want to get into is the black man. I'm going to get into some good things, I'm going to get into some bad things. First, I'm going to get into the good things. Okay, a good man in general is the most underrated thing ever. It's very underrated and underappreciated as well but most likely a black good guy is almost invisible and a black good guy is almost invisible towards a black woman who she claims she loves him. now when I say that I mean some not all though but I'm tired of people using that to cover the actions for majority. Some, not all though, do not mean that that wins. The correct answer with that is to say, yes, that's not me. I'm not like that. That's very true. What you're saying is true. A lot of people does that. That would be the correct answer. But if a person responds in the other way, they don't care and they are selfish. Good black guys get called lames, which is dull and boring. Goofies. Cartoon character, goofy. Smack in the back of the head, tripping over stuff. And get called vicious hoes. Get called weak. This is the black man. We love our black man. We love our black man. No, 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 you don't. And the black guy can be a good father. He can be a guy who don't abuse women. He can be a guy that do all these things and still he gets called weak. Now, do you have some people who is boring? Yes. You have men and women who are boring. Some of these guys do not even be nowhere near as what you're talking about because the trend is 
to like T-H-U-G. So if you're not a T-H-U-G, then you're not dominant. You're not aggressive. You're not a protector. All this is in, is in their eyes. And you can ask a real gangster who's up in prison will tell you there's a lot of guys out there. The game is not even for them. You know, they're not even strong. And it's also good guys who are stronger than guys in that nature. So black women, some, not all, though, we know, is putting labels on their own black men. No one sees it. No one senses it. It's been going on for years. These are the ones that's putting the black man down, not the good ones. I'm talking about the ones who put in these labels. For example, it was a young lady. I'm going to say a young lady who was in fifth grade, okay? Overheard them talking. She said, yeah, and you got to be uh, dark-skinned, tough, and a game banger, or I'm not going to date you. Bam. That's the label right there, okay? That's the label right there. See, but when a white man or any other else get there because it's a dark-skinned brother in locks, and they think it's angry and aggressive. This is what we're putting out on our own people. Then vice versa. And if you light skinned and you weak and you soft and you lame and you gay. All these characters and labels we are putting on ourselves as black people. Then you have the guy saying, okay, well, you got to be these real dick, super Nicki Minaj things. Okay, now you got girls put a butt implant inside their booties and stuff, things of that nature, getting all this stuff done to their face, just ruining their body. And once again, these are the thugs who like that. You know, a real man is going to accept a woman for who she is in any character. A real man can like a big girl, a short girl, a fat girl, a skinny girl. You see it everywhere. But in our community, it's only really going one way. They're only really particular like one thing. All right? Another example is that Hispanic guy. He dressed up as a nerd. Okay, went up to the young lady and tried to talk to her. She was being shadow. He came back like 10 minutes later dressed in hip-hop gear. She's grabbing on his penis. She kissing him down the tongue. This doing all that. But see, all that is the same guy. He still has edginess. He still can be aggressive, edginess, okay, excuse me. He still can be a good father. He still can be a dominant man. All those things can be inside him. But we overlook each other so much. A black good guy is very unestimated. No one says it. When a black good guy gets cheated on or a relationship ends, it, this is the trend that's been going on for years. I mean, over 50 or 60. They'll say good guys finish last. So, okay. He gets cheated on, disrespected, abused verbally, physically, all this because he's nice. So her actions doesn't count because she was too nice. That's why she cheated on him, treated him like crap. Went out on him. Oh, I got a good idea. Let's call that good guy's finish last. He gonna be real good. He gonna be strong. He gonna be dominant. I, I told him something. What about the actions? What about the actions? That does not cover the actions. And this thing have no one ever said anything on it. Really? So when a guy abused a nice young lady beat her up, abuse her, cheat on her with her friends, her sisters, her cousins. What are you going to say? Oh, man, she was too nice, so I done all that. I would never do that to a woman. If I did, I would never say that's the reason why I done it. I done it because I done it. None of that doesn't mean anything. So we got to learn how we view and watch people first. And you can't be mad at the victim. You can't be mad at the victim. Who's going through? You know, good black men just do not get support. We get overlooked and everything. And you got these women going to work, cleaning, cooking, doing all.